All right, welcome. Um, thanks for tuning in once more. This is uh, Noel Lyons uh, with a lot to cover today in 60 minutes as I run through the pursuit of a lean body with special guests from Dublin, Ireland, Ian Graham and Brian Kavanagh. Ian has been involved in sports from a very young age. Uh, he won the long jump in the Irish Junior Championships in 1996 and later went on to win the Irish Under-23 Championships and is nowadays a certified track and field coach. His mission is to help people sculpt their whole life, not just their body. Uh, Brian has a Bachelor in Science in Sports Science and Health from Dublin City University. He earned his black belt in ITF Taekwondo in 2001 and has competed nationally and internationally in both Taekwondo and boxing and has fought all over Europe as far as Iceland, Poland and my base, Spain. Hey guys, how are you doing today? How's it going? This is Ian here. It's pretty impressive on the boxing side, Brian. I'll start with that because, you know, watching the Olympics, the Irish squad did amazingly well, didn't they? You know? Oh, they done pretty well, yeah. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm good friends with Darren Sutherland, actually. I've sparred him a few times and got the head punched off me a few times subsequently. Other than that, no, it's Sometimes it's people may look at, a, you know, a country like Ireland, and where are you now? About four or five million people? It's about, it's about that, yeah. I haven't, I haven't looked at the um, statistics lately, but it's about that, I'd say, yeah. But, you know, at a world level, there they were. You know, literally punching well above their weight. Oh, very well. Like, I mean, Darren Sutherland's a good friend of mine. He, he trains hard. He started the sport late, and um, he just, but he um, he kept going and he progressed at a fairly fast rate, and he ended up in the Olympics and hopefully be turning professional soon as well. So, look out for him. Brilliant. Okay. Well, let's go to Ian then. Ian, um, you know, tell everybody what what motivates and inspires you as far as you know achieving your athletic body. Um, well, I suppose it was just my background. I got started at a pretty young age in school. Like every other school kid, I had the opportunity to get a day off school to compete in the athletics. So, uh, as any school kid would do, I uh, took that option and pretty much started from there. Um, and then pretty much got hooked on the sport. I started off actually as a uh, cross country and middle distance runner, running the 8 and 1500 meters. But shortly after that, I started doing some of the sprints and kind of the long jump and stuff like that. I just found the training a lot more enjoyable, a lot more, more interesting, and a lot more diverse. Um, it was around the time as well that I also started noticing some kind of changes in physique, you know, and that's pretty much where my interest came in um, training and so on. Brilliant. Having killed all your sausage fibers early on, you know, <laughs> about gaining them back again, yeah? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> right. How about you, Brian? What's your story? Um, well, I started um, taekwondo when I was six. But then um, I was doing that until I was um, until about 13, left it for a year. I went back to it then with a vengeance. But then I was comp- I was competing in taekwondo, competing like up until like in international level, competing in England, um, Spain, all over the place, Scotland, Holland, all that. And I kind of I veered off in around 2002 when I only went. I started boxing really late. I started boxing only at um, at 20 years of age, like so. It was a very late start, you know. But um, I, I kept at it and um, done well, won the Lancers, won a few different titles and stuff like that. But um, it just it, it was an interest for me because I went from using my legs a lot, but I was, all, I was very strong on my hands in Taekwondo. And then I went into the ring and there was a lot of transfer there and I just started enjoying it and kept at it, you know? Yeah, it's punishing though, isn't it? I mean, you have a bad day and you have a bad day. Oh, well, if you have a bad day in the ring, you have a very bad day. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually started off as an amateur boxer too before I got more into the uh, endurance stuff and triathlon and that sort of thing. But uh, fantastic sport. And uh, nowadays I do more kickboxing, which obviously is more whole body than some of the things you're going to be talking about today. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit more. It's, it's, kind of, it's very like taekwondo. The ITS taekwondo would have a lot of similarities to kickboxing. And you'd get you'd be a lot of crossover there. You know, I've competed in kickboxing competitions and were allowed because of the similarities. Right, OK. Um, you've got a great website, your VIP performance website. Uh, you know, what particularly like is like, you know, real results you can see is the, the impact. The, the slogan on it, you know, 30 days from now, you can be nothing more than a month older or you can be on your way to developing a fitter, healthier, leaner, sexier and more defined physique. The decision is yours. Um, I mean, we're really talking about procrastination now, aren't we? Getting people to take action now rather than later. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think, that, you know, there's a couple of kind of key words in there, um, you know, the decision is yours, obviously, you know, um, the decision is always up to that individual, like, you know, and how much they want to change their physique, you know. Um, I think also another key point in there is you can be on your way to, you know. We, we're very, very, very careful on the point, you know, of not saying, 
you know, within 30 days you can achieve all this, you know, but, you know, you can actually be on your way to developing that, that type of physique, that type of look that you want. Yeah. But doesn't everybody want that? I mean, you say the decision is theirs. Surely the desire is there for 95 to, 95% of people you come across? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of people want it, but, you know, when you start to dig down deep and ask them questions in terms of, you know, what are they willing to kind of sacrifice and so on, you'll find that they, you know, they don't want it as much as they think they want it. That's key, isn't it? Uh, I mean, that really is the distinction. Yeah, yeah. You have to kind of search a little bit deeper, like, because everybody comes to you, like, with good intentions and stuff, you know, yep. saying that they really, they really, really want it. But you keep kind of pushing and keep asking questions, you know, you'll, you'll find you get, you get something out of them where you either find out they really want it or they don't want it. Yeah. And it's like both of you, you've had, you know, strong sporting backgrounds. You, you know, you're both pretty much national level. You've had to make a lot of sacrifices yourself. Oh, there's plenty of sacrifices involved in sport. I mean, like, I mean, it, it comes down to, I mean, people like, how do you, how could you not drink? Like, I mean, it's not like you don't drink, but you, there's periods of time where you, you don't drink at all and you, you keep your diet right. You're very disciplined. But, I mean, that's, that's athletes you're talking about. Like, when you're, when you want to, like, develop an athletic body or change your mindset, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to make all the sacrifices that an athlete has to make. You just have to uh, make some and make enough like I like the ninety percent rule. If you're good ninety percent of the time, like you're you're gonna make very good progress. You know what I mean? The ten percent could be a few beers the weekend, a bar of chocolate here and there. But I like the ninety percent rule. Ninety ninety percent of the time you're good, and then ten percent of the time you can do a bit of mess and once it's not excessive. You know yeah, I mean? and it, it even uh, like ninety percent of the year, someone like Ricky Hatton, he trains, he gets in shape, he competes, and then he takes a month or two off. And yeah. he eats all the stuff, drinks loads, and then he's ready to get himself fit again. Yeah, I think 50% of the year are more like with him. <laughs> okay, we won't get into that, maybe. But, um, I mean, Ian, you've got a quote. Um, expect results, just don't expect everything to happen overnight. Yeah, pretty much, um, you know, one of, one of the biggest problems I think people will enter into, you know, a new fitness program or, you know, a new fat loss uh, program, and they actually don't, you don't really believe that they're going to get the results, you know. And I think you have to enter with the mindset that you are going to get the results, you know. Because I think if you start off with a negative mindset, you know, and kind of, you know, you, you know, you, you're there and you're working out, but you're you're not really believing that you're going to get the results that you want. Then I don't really t- think you're telling your mind what you really want, you know. You have to connect the two together. Like, well, they've been there so many times before, and they've failed so many times before that they think yeah, they go again. And they just, yeah, exactly. they're in that repeating pattern? Yeah, the cycle, you know, the vicious cycle, you know. I think it's, um, I think it's Craig Ballantyne. He, 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 he has something good that he just say to people, you know. He talks about, like, how fat loss is hard. But he said, it, he says that once you accept how hard it is, that's when it becomes easy because you can then start to focus on what, what you need to do. You've already overcome that negative actually, belief, haven't you? And, and this yeah, exactly. is to do with all the you know, trainers on the internet, the celebrity diets. They're all promising quick fixes nowadays, aren't they, in less and less time? Yeah, yeah. Every, everywhere you go, like, you know, you'll see, you'll see it, like, you know, um, you know, the secrets to this, the secrets to that, and so on, you know, and, you know, your ultimate body in, in 12 weeks. And although, like, you know, 12 weeks is a long period of time, you can develop, you know, a really good body or make a lot of progress within a 12-week period. Um, you know, it's not, depending on where you're starting at, you know, 12 weeks is not going to be a lot of time if you really want to transform. If you want to make improvements, yes, but if you want to transform your physique, 12 weeks, you know, isn't going to be enough. It's a start, isn't it? It's a foundation. And as soon as people accept that, that helps. Yeah, exactly. So- Sorry, go on. <laughs> I think as well, like, you know, that's, you know, there's, a, there's always going to be the time concern issue, you know, yeah. and with people, it's, you know, how long is it going to take, you know, and why I'll say, well, what's the rush, you know, because once you get there, what are you going to do when you get there? Yeah. Are, you just, are you just going to stop? You know, so you have to look at it long term. Yes, you have to see short term results and progress, but you have to be kind of looking at it from a long term perspective. Um, and also, even, even within the sessions, you know, people, you know, have a, have a time concern in terms of how many sessions per week and how long are we going to have to train. And, you know, we get it a lot, like, you know, people would see your physique and they they would say to you, you know, you know, oh, you must work out every single day. Like, you know, how many hours do you train a day? And then they're actually shocked at what we say, well, we only really train for maybe five days a week, you know, an hour at a time. It's, it's not even shorter some days. 
Yeah, it's quality. I, I actually had that conversation today in the gym. Um, yeah. Here's a girl that says, you know, I'd like to train every day. I don't have time. So instead, I come in three times a week for an hour. And straight away, I said, you know, why yeah. now? <laughs> they're, they're fixed on an hour, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, and even personal training service, I mean, that's probably where it all kind of comes from is like, you know, personal training session is, is an hour long, you know, so everybody should be training for an hour. Yeah. Okay, so what's different about your athletic approach? Well, number one, I think the athletic approach basically is, is it's about behavioural change more than anything else. Like, you want to, you have to change your, your lifestyle more than decide to train athletically. It's about, it's about changing, as we said before, changing your mindset, but it's like, if you, if you train three times a week, hard as nails, try, train constantly, but like, I mean, there's still 165 hours in the week that you completely mess it up, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. You, like if your sleeping pattern's wrong, your nutrition is wrong, like, I mean, you train, you train three times a week for an hour, but you, you eat maybe, well, six times a day for, like, seven days, you know what I mean? Like, and if every one of those meals is wrong, you're, you're not going to make the progress that, that you want to make, you know? If you, if you, you have to think of, like, think outside just your training, think of your workout, Think of your, like, after training, think of your nutrition, think of that, like, everything has to be equated into it. And this, this, like, our athletic mindset is about thinking of everything as a whole, you know. It's not just what I do in the gym or what I do in the kitchen. It's the what way they interact with each other. Yeah, but it's not just exercise, not just nutrition. It's a complete lifestyle approach looking at absolutely everything, isn't it? And uh, I think that's another mindset shift, that if you are eating bad, if you are doing <laughs> overlong, uh, poor workouts, not sleeping right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, even watching rubbish TV, um, you know, your energy levels—they're not going to be as high as someone who, who is on this sort of performance lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's like a good point um, on the negativity. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know, will need to look for support structures, and one of them is obviously going to be social support. You know, you'll see it on the internet nowadays just a, an increase in you know online fitness websites and forums and membership websites because you know they get that support that maybe they're not getting from families and friends and stuff like that. So you do need that social support. And I also... What, 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 what is it about the support in? You know, why, why is that the big buzzword right now? Um, well, you can't, you know, do the, all these things on your own. You know, there's, there's going to there's be mistakes. You're going to make mistakes along the way. So you do need to have that support there. You know, someone, that's, someone that will <clears throat> not only support you, but also hold you accountable. Right. Brian, any comments? Yeah, I was just going to say, that, that, that's a good one there about support. I mean, like a friend of mine, a good friend of mine now, I, I do a lot of his, like I, I train him as well now, and I've got him into some fairly like good condition, but he's, um, there's one story he t- t- told me about when he finally started to change his nutrition. He always had his training down to a tippy, and I had him in fairly good condition, but he wanted more. So what what I observed was one time his brother was going away and it was a party, and he was, he was sitting at the table, with a lot of people around him, but and like he was after fixing his nutrition, but his, his mother, his own mother, started offering him um, a big lump of cake. And I seen it, I seen this, but I was kind of just watching. I thought it was funny, like, but he was like, "No, I don't want it." And she was like, "I go on, have the cake." And he was like, "No, but I just don't want it. I'm not there, I'm not eating enough food. I don't want the cake." You know what I mean? And it was just, it was just funny. Like it's just the one that stands out in my mind. I was like, "I don't want it." And there's someone trying to force cake on him and thinking there's something wrong with him because he doesn't want. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> It's just, it's just funny. It's just one that sticks out in my mind, you know. Yeah, well, like, right. like the, the likes of athletes. I mean, if you look at their support structures, I mean, they have coaches, managers, they have agents, they train and partners. They, they have a whole. Most of the time, they have a team, and if not a team, if it's an individual sport, they have a coach or they have like a sparring partner even that they can knock stuff on out. But they still have a person there that they can lean on. Whereas most most gym rats, they show up on their own. They have a friend that isn't quite as dedicated as they are, and they go in and they have not like. And then they're on their own, then after a couple of weeks, if the other person leaves and goes home and forgets that he doesn't want to go to the gym anymore. But you have someone that genuinely wants to support. They, they can't because they, they, they lose the support and then they end up not going up to the gym because, number one, they're on their own. Number two, they might not even have a spot and they might not feel like they're making the gains that they should have. They, you know, it, it all adds up, you know what I mean? It accumulates and it will get, it'll get into their head that, hey, what am I doing this for, you know? Yeah, no, great point. I wouldn't have got as far as I have without my teammates because, uh, you know, it's not just training together. You race together. You want to beat each other. Um, you, you, you've got some great quotes yeah. on the website. Another one that I like is, you know, fitness is a state of mind. It's the way of being that shows up in everyday life. 
And this is this whole idea, it's not just about the perfect body, it's how you show up in life, full stop. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think you mentioned something briefly there, just the word kind of stuck on my head, and you talked about um, the mindset shift, and fat loss is what it should be, not just weight loss, not based on what the scale says. The first thing you need to shift is your way, your way of thinking, you know. A lot of people have, have the, wrong, the wrong mindset, like, you know, so that's why um, you need to make that mindset shift first. Right. So, yeah, I was going to actually, this is my next question, what comes first, the healthy body or the healthy mindset? Um, I definitely think if you're looking for both long-term progression, you definitely want to address your mindset at first. I think, you know, like, a lot of people, uh, I would have clients come to me and I would say to them, well, I can't start training you for another week or two and they're like oh no I want to start right now I says, well you can start right now you can start getting your mind right first you know you, you, you shouldn't always look at your own starting when you start the physical activity you know your, your first session on the new program or something like that you know you should be sitting down and deciding in explicit detail what it is you want to achieve you know what type of physique you want to have exact, what exactly you want it to look like and um, you know to go into details you know you want to sit down you know set out your goals identify like uh, you know, any any obstacles that are going to get in the way, like work, you know, having to work overtime. You know, because there's, there's going to be a lot of obstacles that will pop up, and you are going to make mistakes along the way. I mean, we make them all the time. But the, the thing about it is we know that we're going to make mistakes, and we when we make them, we don't dwell on them. We just move on, you know. And that's the biggest problem with people is they make a mistake and they dwell on it, and that snowballs and spirals into another mistake, another mistake, and then what happens is they just give up and quit. Yeah, it's like all or nothing thinking, isn't it? You think it's all over, <laughs> whereas, you know, it's all part of the uh, Exactly, and that's, that's uh, even on nutrition, like a lot of the thinking with people, and that's why the 9 10 rule is so good, um, you know, that you want you want, you want want to have that little bit of leeway, like, you know, because, you know, if you're going to cut everything out and try and be perfect, you know, you might maintain that for a week or a couple of days, and what happens is then when you break it, you feel like crap because you, you have been committed to being absolutely perfect and what will happen is, you know, you'll say, okay, I'm going to try harder next time, you know, and then they got to start again and then they no doubt are going to fail again on the, on that type of system where you, where it's all or nothing, you know, and that'll just snowball and eventually they'll just give up and they'll have to stop. Whereas if you start with the mindset knowing that you're going to make mistakes along the way, if you start with the mindset knowing that you're going to give yourself a little bit of leeway, you know, you're more than likely going to have the success that you want. But you have to start with the mindset and you have to start thinking long term, not just short term. Yes, you want short term uh, results and progress, but you have to look at it long term. Yeah, it's a combination of both, isn't it? And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a commitment to excellence rather than pursuing perfection, isn't it? It's a key concept, It's uh, if you get that one. It's, it's, see, it's, it's the commitment to um, knowing that they're in it for the long haul rather than like, I mean, a lot of people go, oh, yeah, know what I'm going to do? I'm going to train real hard for the next couple of weeks. You know what I mean? They, they, get, they get that into their heads that they have to, well, if they are training, they have to ruin themselves. They literally do train every day, and they eat lettuce and chicken. That's all they eat. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't get it that they're in, they're in it for the long haul. If they want to develop this body or they want to get this, like, mindset or they want to feel better or anything like it, it has to be long term. It has to be something that you just adopt, and that's, that's the way you go, you know what I mean? I like, I like, um, I mean, like people, what happens is people decide, right, they, they, they contemplate it, right? There's a, there's a good, um, actual model called, um, the trans theoretical model. I'm not going to go too much into the science of it, but like, it basically says, like, there's a pre contemplation stage where the people are kind of, they're not aware that they want a new body, they're not aware that they want anything, but then next comes their awareness, they go, here, hang on a second, I'd like to change. But, they don't know how to, they don't know what to do, but then, then they find out, they find solutions, they might read a book or find an article or something like that, and then they decide, that here, right, I'm going to get ready for this, I'm going to prepare for the, this change of mindset, you know what I mean? It takes so long to get to action, they have to think first, they don't think about it, then they think about it, then they have to prepare for it, and then comes action, they actually decide, alright, and they go to the gym, they get a gym membership, or they read, they, they buy more books or something like that, just to research it, you know what I mean? Then they have, then you have a maintenance. You have to keep it up. You have to in there for the long haul. You have to keep it up and actually continue training and eating properly. And then you've um, termination, where like that's the final stage of it, which means the behaviours you used to have, like if you skip the workout, you used to be like, oh yeah, I'm not in the, I wasn't in the humor that workout, you know. But when when you actually adopt the athletic mindset, it, it becomes actually you don't you don't enjoy missing the workout. It actually becomes a hindrance when you miss one. You, it's actually a bad thing to you. It's not. 
or if you eat a bad meal, you're actually like, oh my god, I, I won't do that again. That doesn't, that doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? It's, it's it becomes it, it becomes sort of flipped flipped on its head. Whereas you, you maintain everything and you keep everything right because that's just the way you are as opposed to you're not trying anymore yeah great point Brian so I'm forever telling my clients you don't get fit in one session you know consistency is key and in which case you don't get unfit in one session by missing it either so it, it is going back to the point you've been making about being in it for the long haul and uh, that is a great model and I think the key thing there is people can move through that at different rates and some people will uh, circle and circle through those cycles it's not always just straightforward. You may go through it several times, and that goes back to the point Ian was making about just preparing yourself in advance, a um, bit of mental training, if you like, for some of the obstacles that are going to come up, because when you have prepared them in advance, when they do crop up, they're that easier to cope with. Well, it's, it's, see, that, that's what it's, again, like, people are at risk of relapse and stuff like that and return to their old behaviour pattern. And that's what, like, the reverse will only happen earlier on. So they start to go to the gym for three weeks and then they stop. You know, when I mean, they go to the gym for four weeks, but because they're not informed, they're doing things wrong and they're not seeing the, the, they're not seeing the results. They might be eating wrong and training really well, or they might be training really badly and eating reasonable, but not enough. And not, not, like, you know, there's always, there's always, there's always something there that messes them up. Whereas if they, if they knew where they were on this, um, start in this cycle, then, they can go, hang on a sec, I'm at risk of relapse here, and they can kind of, they can assess it themselves, whereas, they don't know, they're not, it's not explained to them, they haven't quite contemplated, whereas, like, we like to fully explain this, and then you can tell them, here, You're like, right, you relapse, that's what it's called, but you, like, all you have to do is get past that, like, it's called the grind, you know, all it's called the grind, it's a part where you're kind of like, you're not seeing as many results as you like, you'd like to have a six pack in six weeks, and all this sort of stuff, but, it doesn't work. You just you have to, you you man it out and just get through that grind part that I like to call it. But then when you get into the maintenance phase or the termination phase, or like as they call it, you, it doesn't become that anymore. It's just, it's just something you do, and that once they get through that, they're not at risk of relapsing anymore because it's part of them. It's part of their lifestyle. Yeah, excellent. So true. And uh, so there's another great quote from Ian here. Like, if your mind is weak, your body will be weaker which I'll like again. So we've covered a lot on desire and wanting to get fit. Let's talk about passion, because again, you've got a great acronym for passion, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, just, just on the, um, the one about the, if the mind is weak, the body will be weaker. One thing that I just want to talk about is um, just, just people taking responsibility for their own actions and for their own results that they get. Um, you know, something that I've experienced and something that I've actually gained from as a personal trainer is what I like to call trainer hopping. You know, it's people who come to you and they're not being fully committed. You know, they're looking for a certain certain uh, certain level of a result. You know, they come to you for you know for information and so on, they're looking for you for guidance to get what they want. You you give them the right information. You know, they come to you maybe two or three times a week, and then you know they're meant to eat outside of that training uh, window. Uh, you know, they're meant to eat properly, sleep properly, and so on. Maybe have additional workouts that they do on their own, and then you know they don't get, they're not getting the results because you know they're not getting the sleep, they're not putting in the additional workouts that they should be doing. You know, they're not eating properly. They're going from the gym straight to the drive to McDonald's or something like that. You know, so they have to take responsibility for themselves and not put the onus on getting the results on anybody else. Now, obviously, there are trainers out there who, you know, are, are better than others or have better programs in, in place and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, they have to have responsibility on their own shoulders for the results that they want. You know, the trainer, again, the trainer is only someone who's helping them get, get what they want. He's not the one giving it to them, you know. They're the ones who have to do the work to get it themselves. He's just a little bit of an aid along the way. Um, Very much and with, responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, another another one on, on the the mindset, like you know, if 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 the mind isn't right, you know, people going in, yes, you know, some people have better genetics than others. You know, some people have a slow metabolism and the fat gene and all, all this type of stuff. You know, and that that's fine. Like you know, if if you have those things, you need to address them. You know, but don't don't start a program thinking you know I'm feeling bad, like walking around with a defeated attitude already. You know, thinking, oh, I'm not going to get the results I want because, as I say, if 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 you're telling your body that, well, you're not going to get the results you want. You know, you have to go in there with the mindset that, you know, I am going to get the results that I want. You know, I'm going to push on through this, like you know, until until I get there. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take. I'm going to have the mindset, the attitude that, 
you know, I'll get the results I want. I'm just going to be persistent. Yeah, it's whatever you believe you will achieve. <laughs> if you yep. don't believe you you will, then that's what's going to happen. You won't. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Th- there's a story about the Vikings, if I can remember as well. When they used to invade, when they invaded the country, they'd uh, burn their boats. That way there was no way back. <laughs> so, and that's, you know, obviously that led to the whole Viking invasions all around uh, Europe, which I've always liked. And uh, even if you look at the word to decide, uh, according to its original origins, it does mean to cut off from any other choice. And I think it is a top yeah. train that will get you to commit uh, by having p- complete faith and confidence in him to deliver the results. But it's still very much a joint responsibility. Oh, no, definitely, definitely. And just on that, like, um, I remember some, I don't know, I think he's a motivational speaker, and he, he was talking on goal setting, and he, he said, you know, you must make your goal. You know, it, it must become something that you must have, not something that you would like or something that you would want, but it has to be a must-have item, you know. Until it becomes a must, he said, you're never going to achieve it. Brilliant. So here's a quote for you. I mean, desire is to want something, but passion is the refusal to live without it. Going back to passion, can we run through the acronym that you guys have come up with? Because, um, you know, it looks good. Yeah, sure. I mean, it was just a little something that I basically put together. Um, just basically, I mean, number one, you know, the P basically stands for plan. You know, coming from an athletic background, you know, it's, it's something athletes always have, you know, and everybody's heard the saying, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail. And it, yep. it might sound a little bit cheesy or corny, but it's, it's very, very true, you know. I mean, athletes, you know, they, they, they don't turn up, you know, at their practice sessions and, you know, say say to the coach, okay, what am I going to do today, coach? You know, the coach has a plan, you know, but if you're an athlete, you don't just show up to the track and, you know, ask for your workout. You know ahead of schedule of what your workout is going to be and so on. So you have to plan things. You know, you've got an objective for every single workout, haven't you? And probably even sub-objectives too, not just your overall plan as well, which is important. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, one, one workout's got to, you know, take into consideration the previous workout and the workout that's going to follow. So A is for action? A is for action, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you have to take action at some point, you know. And, um, you know, there's no point in planning, planning and planning and planning if you don't then go ahead and take action at some point. So you must, you know, at some point you have to take action. Um, S then, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you have to you have to start having self-belief and begin with having success in mind, you know, believing that you are actually going to succeed in, in achieving what you want. And um, the second S then is for what we talked about a little bit earlier, you know, you must find social support and surround yourself with positive people. We also touched it upon um, being surrounded, I think you mentioned it, by people that are negative and, you know, watching shows that are negative and stuff like that. And just on that, like I have a good friend in, in, in Canada, she does um, some fitness uh, figure competitions and stuff like that and she talks about that a lot you know surround yourself with the right type of people like you know it's extremely important you know that you're around similar people either either around people that want to achieve the same thing that you do you know or people that are very uh, successful in whichever field they are in you know they could be business or it could be anything once they're successful type people and people that are uh, positive and not negative yeah it's feed the mind as much as the body isn't it exactly yeah exactly um, then the I is for invested, you know, you must be physically, emotionally, and financially invested. You know, you have to be invested in what you're doing, you know. It's, it's, it's you who wants it, so you have to be invested, you know. I mean, it's great, like, going and, you know, giving money to a personal trainer and stuff like that, you know, or buying an e-book and stuff online, you know. I mean, the financial part, I mean, for a lot of people, that's easy, you know. It's, it's, that's an easy investment, you know, but you have to be emotionally invested, emotionally involved, involved in what you're looking to achieve. Um, you must identify all potential obstacles. You know, you have to identify what's going to get in your way. Like, I mean, you know, some people have, you know, families, you know, girlfriends, boyfriends, um, kids, you know, everybody, I hope, has jobs. Um, you know, there's, there's certain things, like, I mean, you know, you, you can't be totally focused on just your training, like, you know. Um, there's, there's other things that are in your life, you know, people want to take vacations and things like these. You know, so you just have to look and you have to plan and, and look at what potential obstacles are going to get in your way. I mean, you know, if you have a workout plan for a certain evening and you have to work late, you know, and you don't have enough time, let's say, maybe to drive from where you work to your gym, get your session in and get home, you know, there goes your whole session. But if you plan ahead of time and if you know, well, hold on, I have some quick workouts I can do at home, you know, I mean, that's your reserve and there's that obstacle out of the way. 
you know, so it's just, it's just identifying little things like little obstacles that are going to get in the way and they're always going to pop up and there's going to be ones that are unexpected and that you can prepare, prepare for. Okay, and then finally the end is never give up. Yeah, we've exactly. we've spoken about as well, haven't we? And uh, there's actually, you know, talking on passion, there's a quote I remember from Pavarotti. He said that uh, people, you know, think I was highly disciplined. I was simply devoted. And that's yeah. really the passion quotient, isn't it? Whatever you do, whatever you're going after, it's as important as the desire. You've got to know what you want. You've always got to know why. And, uh, in some ways, it's even bigger, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I remember hearing one trainer, and that's what he, he talked about. He said you, you have to keep asking questions and keep digging a little bit deeper. You know, if someone says to you, you know, you know, why do you want to, you, you know, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to lose the weight? You know, and they're like, oh, I just want to look better. You know, then you ask them, you know, why do you want to look better? You know, you have to kind of get to the root so they can become then emotionally connected. You know, like, you know, there's a guy who's, you know, maybe really overweight and he has kids. You know, maybe when you keep pushing deeper and deeper and deeper, maybe he really wants to be around for his kids, you know. Um, but he won't let you know that if you just ask, you know, what you want to do and he just answers with, I want to lose weight and you're like, okay, that's fine. So you have to keep asking those questions. Definitely. And um, I've been reading through your report that you sent me earlier. Uh, you, you, you talk a lot about the athletic mindset versus the fitness mindset. And again, I, I think that's quite an important point to put across as well. Um, yeah, well, uh, like the, main, the main thing is like fitness mindset, they have, they have like, they go in, like they go into the gym and they go, okay, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to do a few weights and then I'm going to go for a big long, long waist climb run. Or they go in, like, like they have no set, they don't, they don't have a goal for the session. I think you spoke about this earlier on a little bit. Like, um, they don't have a set goal for their session. They don't have a set goal for, you know, like, like you have to be, if you're, if you're, like, uh, there's a good quote by Michael Johnson there, if your goal is to get in shape, you will be in bad shape. It's better to focus on specific goals, you know? Like, if you, if you choose something like, I want, I want to be able to do five chin-ups, you know, but you can only do one, you know what I mean? Little things like that, I mean, like, getting little goals like that, it's not like, oh yeah, you know what I want to do? I want to have a six-pack and big pecs by December. It doesn't work like that. If you have something else, if you say, right, I want to be able to do 10 reps of 60 kilo or something, you know, a, a different goal, a smaller goal, but it will bring you closer to your ultimate goal. You always have an ultimate goal. You have short-term goals as well. It comes back to athletes and the way they periodize their training. You know, if you have a, if you have a small goal, a, like a, a short-term goal, then you have medium-term goals and long-term goals. Like your long-term goal is to achieve the athletic body that you want. Well, like you have short-term goals there. Right? I want to, I want to see that that bottom ab, you know, or I want to um, be able to do 30 push-ups in a row or, you know, little small things like that, you know. Yeah, and this is where you talk about performance and outcome goals versus process goals versus fat loss goals. I always remember, you know, when Linford Christie was the fastest man in the world, there he was on the front paper and they're talking about his abs. <laughs> and, and his focus was, you know, to be the fastest man in the world. And yeah. unless you're an athlete, you just wouldn't get that. We see the thing about it is they they have um the reason that um sprinters have them them abs is because you know like people people have it in their head there's there's just one small point to like touch on people have it on their head that they do lots of crunches they get six packs you know what I mean like your abs that's not the function of your abs your abs are to prevent hyperextension they're to stop you falling over and to prevent their anti rotation so like if you picture a sprinter all they're doing is resisting rotation all the time they're sprinting along and they're and they're real low body fat they're doing high intensity training all the time. You know what I mean? Like these, these, the type of trend they're doing, it's not. It may not be their goal. I don't think Jeff Christie ever looked in the mirror and said, "Oh yeah, you know what I want to do? I want to get abs." He says, "I want to run." Yeah, that's my point, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was awesome. exactly it. That's what the media and the general public were focusing on. Whereas obviously, Linford Christie, he was a performance outcome goal. I want to be the fastest man in the world. Yeah, exactly. He just wanted to. He wanted to go. He wanted to run fast. But yeah. he had a goal, and that's how he got the abs. You know. But like, what do not mean? Like. You, you have like that. That's what we say. Begin with the end in mind, mind, but start from where start from where you are right now. You know. So most of my say might might want to have abs, but first of all, I want to train myself to be able to sprint. You know. You know, I want to try and be able to sprint, and then I'll sprint, and then I'll do this, and that, you know, there's always different little goals. I mean, but the thing about it is, all this the type of training that athletes do, their physiques come as a side effect of what training they're doing. You know. So that's the really key point, isn't it? And, uh, you know, that's actually how I still train today. That, uh, you know, I don't go after the six pack or the perfect body, but by doing what I do, uh, more often than not, that tends to result. You tend to get the results from, 
from having these miniature goals and having the and training your body as opposed to training your abs, you know. But then like they, they come it comes with it as a side effect. I mean, like you get gymnasts. I mean, I don't I don't think there's one gymnast looked in the mirror and said, Hey, you know what I want bigger triceps. They they want to be good gymnasts, but these things come as a result of the type of training they do and that's the way you need to think about it. You need you need like outcome goals, you need performance goals, you need process goals, you know? So you need you need to divide them up like that and say, Alright, outcome I wanna end up like this, but how do I get there? You know? Do I have to and yeah, anybody, to anybody can do a process goal because a process goal, for example, is I will train three, four times a week. So you tick that off, that's achievable by anybody. But you not everybody is gonna have the physique of a link for Christie. But they have they have a they have a process there in place now that it's possible that they they're not gonna maybe not get the physique of them for Christie, but they can make improvements, you know. So it's like every if, if everybody was like genetically predisposed to looking like Jim for Christie, you know what I mean? Plenty of them going down, but they're not. But you see, you can always make you can always make improvements, and that's the main thing that keeps you mo- motivated is seeing the miniature improvements. And when they don't see them, like and when they're, or if they're few and far between, that's how they uh, that's why they give up, and that's why they have that reversal we were talking about earlier on. Yeah, and the other key point you made too is there's you know for the passion for the why they're working towards competitions, and I think you know for the. Uh, I don't like the word, but the everyday person, there's now a lot of uh, contests and challenges online, these 12-week transformation challenges, and I think they're brilliant motivation to get involved in and start working towards, because the concept's the same. You've got something bigger to work towards rather than just the how you're going to look. Exactly, yeah. You know, you have, you have to have something to work towards, but also when you get there, you have to reset goals, you know, so you have to have something to work towards beyond that point. You know, it's like athletes, you know, obviously this year they would have all been working towards the Olympic Games in Beijing, you know, but they had competitions along the way preparing them for that bigger goal of the Olympics. And then once the Olympics ends, they still have some smaller competitions. Okay, they're less important to those athletes, um, unless obviously the athletes lost, then they become really important. <laughs> um, you know, but those competitions post their main event, you know, still keep keep them uh, motivated to keep working towards uh, seeing improvements in performance and so on. And we can always bring that back to, you know, you know, the fitness person them. They need to have something to work towards. I mean, everybody has a sister or a brother or, you know, their mother or something like that. You know, and you'll have heard them say, oh, I want to get in shape for so-and-so's wedding. You know, and I, I always try and encourage people, you know, if, if you want to do something, do it for yourself, not necessarily the event. You know, to make sure you're doing it for yourself, yourself. But the event, yes, is something good to work towards. But you need to work towards it and beyond it also. And talking about progression and working towards it, you got a great concept of a PB board. Oh yeah, the um, well, I mean, this pretty much comes back to you know, I mean, success coaches and lifestyle coaches. I mean, they always talk about um, you know, creating your vision board. Yeah. You know, and you know, it, it comes back to visualization. You know, I mean. And again, that's something athletes are going to do. They're going to visualize themselves, you know, creating the perfect performance in their own head before they actually get out there and do it. Um, and likewise, you need to constantly be aware of what you're working towards and what you want to see, you know, as your outcome. You know, so, you know, people talk about creating a vision board. Um, you know, it's just basically simply a board or you could use, you know, a, a folder or something like that. And pretty much, you know, that person would then, you know, in a relation to getting a lean body and stuff like that, you know, go and find images maybe on the internet or in papers or in you know health and fitness magazines um, that have of people that have the body that you want, the type of look that you want, you know. And also, don't don't sell yourself short, you know. I mean, you know, find the exact body that you want, you know, um, and you know, basically cut them out or print them out from your computer, place them on that vision board or folder, you know, and look at it, look at it daily, like you know, look look at it every day, so you know. Okay, this is what I'm working towards, you know. So I mean, I have to do my my daily process goals if I want to get this outcome goal, you know. So I have to watch my nutrition today. I have, you know, today is one of my training days. I have to get my session in, you know. I have to get my sleep, you know. So it just keeps you reminded of what you're working towards, you know. If if you just say, you know, I want to lose, you know, a certain amount of weight, you know, and and you, and you put that away, you know, and you never kind of monitor where you're heading. You know, you're not going to get there, so you need to constantly remind yourself of what you're doing it for. You know, and that's why it's important to commit to paper. You know, what you want to achieve. You know, because you're the one who wants it, and you're the one writing it down. So, it's it's important to remind yourself that you made that commitment to yourself. Yeah, it's that top of mind awareness, isn't it, all the time? So it doesn't doesn't get lost. 
Um, you actually did a survey, didn't you? You asked people, you know, what they, what the ultimate body was for them. What sort of results did you get back on that? Yeah, I mean, pretty much we we, we did a survey. We're just kind of interested. I mean, we we kind of knew, like, I mean, what results we were going to get, but we we did it for a specific purpose. Um, basically, what the survey was, we did one for men and one for women. It was just called the ultimate body survey. There were two simple questions, um, for each of the two genders. You know, so we asked the men, you know, what type of physique they would like to to achieve. You know, would it be like a skinny body, fat body, you know, a lean and muscular athletic body, or, you know, a more bodybuilder type physique. Um, you know, I'm pretty much every guy, like, you know, that goes to the gym, they're, they're training like your typical bodybuilder or gym rat. But we know even without asking them, that's not how the majority of people want to end up, you know. A lot of them through consultations will tell us, you know, they prefer, you know, a nice bit of muscle and, you know, to be really lean and defined like an athlete. Um, you know, and then we ask them also, you know, what they would find attractive, you know, um, or desirable in, in the opposite sex, like in a female, you know. And again, the, the majority of the answers did come back to that athletic and lean look. And likewise with the women, you know, they answered, they, you know, obviously they didn't want a fat body. I mean, I don't think anybody wants that. Um, you know, and then... There were, there, were one, there were one or two who did put down they wanted a skinny body, you know. Then there was one or two who, um, they had the option, you know, to write in exactly what they wanted. And a lot of them was not too slim but very toned, which in reality is lean and athletic. And um, they're just putting it in the wrong words. Um, but the majority of the results came back pretty much in the high 80s to 90% that, you know, people want that lean and athletic look. Um, you know, very few women obviously put down they wanted to develop a, a, a bodybuilder physique. Um, but our whole point of the survey was, you know, if this is what you want to achieve, you know, you want this lean and athletic look, well, then why are you training, you know, in a way that isn't going to get you um, the results that you want? So, you know, you want to look lean and athletic, yet you're training like the bodybuilders, you know. So there was a, there was, there was a point to the survey. Of course. <laughs> I think the key point too is whilst getting that look, you don't want to give away that you spend half your life in the gym either, do you? Even if you do. Well, I mean, like, they're training, they, they, like, I mean, like, like, a lot of people ask me for, like, oh, I want the, I want the six day split, I want to train it, oh, this, I want to do, I want to, and if I give them, but like, if I tell them, hey, look, you don't, like, I mean, the six day split, like, if you, if you want to spend that amount of time in the gym, like, Fair enough, I can I can work something out for you, you know what I mean? But you're probably better off with four and do like full body sessions, do one condition session, you know, do split it up a little bit more that like your body's working as a unit, you know. Like let's see people going in there and doing twenty sets of bicep curls and going home, you know. Like they're training I mean it's fair enough if you've got pharmaceutical help and you've got like and you've got the genetics of a bodybuilder, it's fair enough you're gonna you're gonna make progress. But if you're your average show with not with, with that doesn't have superior genetics and you're not injecting yourself with anything, I don't want to put it that way, but like, like you're not going to get there doing a heap of bicep curls and going home and then thinking you deserve a post-workout shake when you really only work about 200 grams of muscle fibers, you know what I mean? How much protein can a bicep in, like, ingest, you know? Like, they're, like, they're training like bodybuilders and they're going home and they're going, oh yeah, you know what, I want to grow, you know? And, and they're going home and they're eating a load, load of rubbish because like, they're told they need loads of calories. But like, so, in, other, in essence, they're training like bodybuilders and then they're eating like fat people, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so we, we've spoken a lot about training with intent as opposed to just more intensity, training harder. We've also spoke about, um, you know, passion and really cultivating that passion as the big why. Um, another great concept that you talk about is knowing the price you have to pay for an effective workout. And again, you've got like a little acronym for this. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, I mean, uh, a coach in America, I brought him here for a seminar a couple of years ago, Bering Gambetta, and he has a little acronym that he calls uh, ICE. And um, basically, you know, the I is for intensity. You know, you've got to look at the intensity of workouts. C is for concentration, and then E is for effort. Obviously, you got to put forth the right amount of effort. You know, so I just kind of expanded upon that um, and just added the P and the R into it, you know, and the P is basically just for posture you know, our tactical uh, performance on all your exercises, you know. So, you know, within your workout, you're trying to focus on these five things. You know, you're looking at your posture and your performance, <coughs> excuse me, on all the different exercises and activities that you do. You know, then R is rest intervals. I mean, that's one key thing that people do not do in the gym. I mean, one thing I always have with me is my stopwatch. You know, people don't properly monitor the rest intervals. You know, they'll 
Yeah, they have, yeah. It's a big, big thing, isn't it? I mean, they're watching the screens, they're chatting to their mates, and workouts can be lost and won in intervals. Yeah, or they might be, you know, texting their girlfriend or boyfriend on the phone in between sets, you know, and then it's a big long conversation, and before you know it, you know, they've had 10 minutes of rest between you know, the first and second set. You know, so you really need to, you know, be watching, you know, and that's, that's another key point. I mean, that's why a lot of people's workouts, you know, do drag out and become long, is because they're not monitoring the rest intervals properly. And, yeah, so, I mean, pretty much, you know, P is for uh, posture and performance and all exercises. R is for rest intervals. I is for intensity. You know, you got to look at the intensity of workout. And C is for concentration. You know, where is your mind at? Are you focused on what you should be doing? Where is your mind wandering somewhere? And then effort, you know, you got to put forth the right uh, levels of effort to every session. And a word about supplements? I mean, obviously, is a key hint in the word, isn't it? Well, you see, the thing about supplements is, right, like, there is, there's research proven, there's a certain amount of supplements that are research proven, they've worked time and time again, there's like, I mean, like, I mean, like, protein, creatine, caffeine, you know what I mean, like, and sugar, but I mean, sugar, yeah. It's just sugar, but like, those three supplements are the ones that are researched and they've been proven to work, you know? Like caffeine, I mean, you drink a cup of coffee, I mean, you can, I think, I think the studies go forward, I mean, you've got 3 or 4% um, increase in neural output, like you can probably get a slight bit heavier, you know what I mean? They're supplements, you know, 3, 4%, what is it, like, you know what I mean? It's a kilo or two, uh, most people lift, you know? Like protein, you're supplementing your diet, like if, if you're, like, if you eat really a ice cream or cake all day and then have a protein shake after your workout, like, that's, that's not going to do anything for you, do you know? Kind of the thing, like, like I see, like I was in Muckle Beach a couple of weeks ago, and I was seeing like, like people going around with a certain like a brand of supplement on their T-shirt, and going around with these, with, like, and the, like they obviously, I went out and done my research, and I found that they're getting these T-shirts free with a certain supplement, you know. So obviously, loads of people had them. It was like it was like wearing a Nike T-shirt or a football jersey. They were everywhere. Everybody was buying this supplement, of which I know for a fact is nonsense anyway. But I like. It's the supplements, number one, it's like, it's called, it's a vasodilator, you know what I mean? It's like, it's increased blood flow to your muscle, but then again, it increases blood flow to your muscle, but there's no protein in it. There's no protein in it, so you're force feeding nothing into your muscle, you know? Like, there's, there's so, so many things, like, so, in other words, back, back to the main point, anyway. So, in other words, the main that. point is, you know, whilst you don't, say, don't take them, you, you do point out, at least for me reading the report, is that they are supplements, and if you get the right training, the right nutrition, the right mindset, then you probably wouldn't need them. Would you go that far? Anyway, I'd say you don't. You, like you don't need them. They can be helpful if you're stuck. You know exactly what quantities there is in the scoop of whatever it is that you're taking, or a bar, protein bar, or whatever. You know the nutritional information of it. They can be helpful. They can be like the main point is that it shouldn't be the staple of your thing. You don't think if you if I don't have four tubes of protein and a, um, a load of creatine in my press that I'm not going to make any progress. You know, like. You don't need you don't need them. They can help. That's all, that's that's the main point. They can help, but you don't need them. They're not they're not essential. You can make progress with good nutrition, good training, healthy lifestyle, and you will make all the gains that you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to sum up, I mean your whole athletic body system. It's more than just a training or a nutrition system. It's a complete year-round athletic approach to developing an incredible lean and athletic-looking body. That would be it. Yeah. As you said before. It's it goes back to the way the way athletes do. They obviously have a goal in mind. So if you have a goal, so if you if you can adopt that the year long approach, basically what you're doing is you are you're in a sense you're training like an athlete. You might not have to train for the hours a week, but like the rest of your lifestyle is the way the way an athlete would kind of arrange themselves, would kind of like compose themselves towards drinking their diet, all that sort of stuff. Like you just have it in the back of your head and just adopt that lifestyle as opposed to just a training method. You know, like you have a lot of people out there are training programs out there and that's a training program. It's not it's nothing to do with your and then but then you have lifestyle programs. What we've done is kind of tried to integrate the two that you've got lifestyle, you've got you've got training, you've got a lot of information there that you can that you can work with, you know? Yeah, and information like, you know, the best type of exercises that people are doing are not necessarily have exercises. That's gonna be a mindset shift for some, isn't there? And then again you've got your own ABS get lean food pyramid as opposed to the healthy food pyramid that all the dietitians give out. Um, I mean, Ian, you've written this report, The Athletic Approach to Developing a Lean Body. Here, I wrote it too, aren't you? <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Are you making that available somewhere? Because I'll certainly make it available at my getfit.ca site if you want. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be up either tomorrow or by Tuesday if you log on to www.athleticbodysystem.com. Okay, cool. And you'll be able to just enter your name and your email and just sign up for that free report. And, you know, it's got a lot of good information in there, you know. I mean, there's one, one really good thing. Section in there actually uh, for females on um, you know some of the biggest mistakes that they make you know and these mistakes might be made by males also you know but a lot of them are um, you know female specific you know because obviously you know you know females do have a lot more um, issues with body awareness and stuff like that you know I mean there's probably a lot more well not probably but definitely a lot more pressure on them to look a certain way you know because of the media and magazines and celebrities and so on so there's a good section in there that kind of addresses some of the issues. So, um, closing words? Um, I'd just like to say, um, nothing tastes as good as lean and athletic field. <laughs> I, just want, I, just, I just think it's, it's a good one there that, like, I mean, if, if, you, if you address your nutrition and stuff like that and try and hard, so you're going to make your goals. That's not the end of her. And just, just in closing, I mean, and pretty much I'm, I come from the, you know, the mindset approach, you know. So, you know, get your mindset in order first, you know. I, I would say to people, you know, if you're look, looking to get lean and athletic, you know, before you even enter a gym, you know, sit down, you know, I, I don't care if it takes a week, you know, sit down, <clears throat> you know, plan everything out in detail, decide exactly what you want, you know, get your mind in order first, and then your body will follow. Sounds like you've got a good combination going, guys, you know, you're putting your strengths together, and you come up with a good program here. So. Yeah, I mean, exactly, I mean, I met Brian about a year and a half ago, you know, he's working from this, the same facility I was working from, you know, and I just noticed him training, and you know, I, I, I liked what he was doing and stuff, and we just got talking and interacting, you know. We both come from the same background in terms of, you know, a sports background and stuff like that, you know. And we pretty much both have that, you know, athletic look, you know. So we got together and started working on this program. Brilliant. You both walked the talk first. It's okay, isn't it? So, okay, well, great talking to you, Ian. Great talking to you, Brian. Nice to meet you. I'd like to thank everybody else who's uh, been listening in. Speak again soon.